Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial. And in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I received another email from a viewer with a question that I think warrants a tutorial for a response. He says, Hi Kevin, first of all, I've watched your Avid tutorials and I've learned a lot from them. Keep up the good work. I saw your email at the end of the tutorial and decided to write you to get some help. I've been struggling with importing screen capture videos into Avid's Media Composer and I was hoping you could tell me some good tips how to do it properly. The quality of the original video is good, but as soon as I import the video into Avid, there is significant loss in quality. Videos blurring the text is unreadable. I guess I'm doing something wrong when I import the video, but I can't put my finger on it. My project is set up as 25i PAL. I've tried to record different screen resolutions starting from Full HD to specific region matching 1024 by 576, but nothing seems to work. When I import the video at 1 to 1 MXF video resolution, there is still loss in quality. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'd appreciate it if you can help. Well, let's put it this way. In this case, whether it's you know a screen capture video, whether it's anything, there's three steps we got to take right from the import to the export that we need to make sure that we follow to know that we're actually getting the best possible end result because that's what's most important is that the you know at the end you have the best possible looking file that you can have so let's talk about importing first now I happen to have a clip on my desktop appropriately enough it's actually a screen capture video and it's one that I did for a previous tutorial for the creative cow now whether this is a screen capture video or really any piece of video for that matter the first thing we need to determine is what is the resolution of the clip that we're working with what I'm going to do is just come up to window I'm going to come down to the movie inspector and you'll see that this clip right now is 1280 by 720 30 frames per second. What we're going to do is we're going to work with this in a 2997 frame per second project, which for the purposes of what we're doing is perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Alt Tab into Symphony, obviously Command and Tab for all my Mac friends out there. Now I've already imported the clip for us to work with, but normally importing is not the first thing I do to check the quality of the file. Normally I do an AMA link to because that's going to give me the quickest possible, you know, end result of getting that file into the Avid or into Symphony or Media Composer to take a look at it. So what I'm going to do, we're just going to pretend that this uh, imported clip isn't even here. I'm just going to say link to AMA files and here we are right on the desktop with uh, learn media composer countdowns. I'm just going to select the clip, say link to AMA and boom there it is. What I'm going to do now is simply double click on the clip and I'm going to call it up here in the preview window and as you can see once I click down to the middle the reason it takes so long to update is that this is an H.264 codec file so the Avid's got to figure out exactly what it is before it can show it to me. The quality is awful just terrible. Take a look at the quality there versus the quality here. The quality here is obviously much better. So what exactly is going on here? I'm just going to come back into Symphony. I'm going to take this whole clip. I'm just going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit it into a new timeline. So here's this clip of my timeline. The only problem is that it still looks awful. I'm just going to come back to the middle of the clip here just so I can see some uh, text on the screen. So what exactly is going on? Did I do something wrong? Is this is this footage really this bad when I bring it in? Well, it's not actually that bad, believe it or not. It actually is 10 times better than what it looks like now. Because really the quality of it hasn't changed from when it was sitting on my desktop. The only difference is that I'm not looking at it at the best possible quality. I'm actually only looking at it in draft mode. And how I know that is right down here, you'll see I've got this big yellow brick staring at me. And as I mouse over it, you'll see the tooltip says Video Quality Menu. What I can do is simply click on the Video Quality Menu. And as soon as I do, you'll see the clip gets immediately much, much, much better looking. Now, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to take not the AMA Link To file. I'm just going to take the imported file because essentially both files are doing exactly the same thing here. So what we're going to do is just hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm just going to edit this. I'll call it the proper clip here just because the response is so much faster on a clip that's not H.264. So again, this is what we started with right here. Terrible quality. Terrible. You'll see that if I click on the uh, quality button, boom, immediately gets better. And I can actually click on it again and the quality will get even better. Let me show you what's going on here. What I'm going to do is just step into effects mode. I'm going to switch back to draft resolution here. Just give it a second here. There we go. Perfect. You'll see quality is terrible. What I'm going to do is simply click on it once and take a look at the huge quality improvement. Let's click on it again. Boom. Very, very nice. You'll see I can even click on it again and I actually get the green box with a little 10 on it, meaning that this is 10-bit. We'll take a look at it now. If I zoom back, I'll just zoom back a couple of things here. And look at that. That is looking spectacular. Just the way I had it outside of Symphony.
So like I said, really in this case, there was no quality difference. It's just the quality that it was showing to me. Much like in After Effects, the way you can work in quarter resolution, that's essentially what was going on here. Okay, let's talk about exporting this clip now because that's important too. And in most cases, the export process is very simple. What I'm going to do is just select the entire clip here by hitting T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm simply going to navigate up to the clip. I'm going to right click and come down to export. Now I'm just going to create a new export setting for the purposes of what we're doing. And I want to show you what sort of the process is that most people go through when they're exporting. I'm just going to switch this right now to something like, um, sure, I'm going to switch it to 720p JPEG. What most people do is when they come in to export something, they pick something, they'll come into the menu, and they'll say, okay, I need to find something that's pretty close to QuickTime. How about QuickTime Reference? Because I'm pretty sure QuickTime Reference is there uh, with the initial export settings when you install Media Composer and Symphony. And what they'll do is they'll click on the options and say, well, you know what, Reference File isn't what I want. I actually want a real QuickTime file. So what they do is they come up to Export As, and they simply select QuickTime Movie, they're like, oh, wow, these are a lot of settings. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this the way that it is. I don't really need to worry about any of this stuff. You know, I've got video and audio. The color levels are RGB, you know, RGB or 601, depending on which one you need. And I'll just stick with the display aspect ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this. I'm going to call this uh, to junk shortly. And I'm simply going to say save. And now I'm going to export this to the desktop. And I'll just call this, uh, we'll just call this number one. I'm simply going to say go, and you're going to see, wow, look at this super fast export, same as source. This is fantastic. Okay, and guess what I have now? When I minimize Media Composer or Symphony, what I'm going to do is just close QuickTime. I've got the file on my desktop right here. I'm just simply going to double click on it. And once it opens, what we have if we go up here to Window and we come down to the Movie Inspectors, we not only have a clip that is now 29.97 frames per second, but it's the original aspect ratio of 1280 by 720. But most importantly, because I imported this clip and I converted it to an MXF file with the Avid codec, the format that it exported to, because I did a same as the source file export, is to Avid DNX HD, which in this case would be 720p 29.97 frames per second. Now, this brings up an interesting problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into Symphony for a second. So I've got the HD version. Client loves it. It's fantastic. It's on my desktop. Now what they say to me is, okay, Kev, you know what? This is fantastic, but you know what? For your tutorial, I need a standard definition version as well. And I know it's HD, so you can just letterbox it. That's fine. I say, okay, sure, no problem. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come up to my project type, and I'm just going to switch that to standard def. Now, what's also important to keep in mind is that the uh, email from the viewer was talking in PAL. I'm working in NTSC. Essentially, what I'm showing you can be swapped back and forth, whether you're working in NTSC or PAL. And I'm just going to switch to a 4 by 3 aspect ratio here. There we go. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to add a new layer of video by hitting Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. And I'm just going to grab that reformat effect by, again, hitting Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. I'm just going to come all the way down to the bottom here to reformat. I'll just grab 16 by 9. Stick it on the topmost layer. There we go. Very nice. Okay, ready to export. So let's just do the exact same thing. I'm just going to export this same as source. I'm going to right click. This is awesome. Say export. I uh, will just call this number 2 SD. And I'm simply going to say go. Now, no valid resolution found to be exported using the same as source. Okay, I don't know what that means. Let's export it again. Okay, call this number 2, SD, save. Error again. How do I get this file out of, you know, Media Composer Symphony now? It keeps giving me this error. I better go over and I better start posting questions to ask people. Don't need to post anything. Don't need to get excited. What's important to keep in mind is that we know that this clip here was originally imported or captured at, D, at 720p 2997 with the Avid codec at 2997 720p, so 1280 by 720. This timeline is no longer 1280 by 720. It's now 720 by 486. Same as source, exporting it the same as the clip resolution is not going to work because this timeline is standard definition. Now, where does this also come into play? This also comes into play in sequences that have a different project type, raster dimensions. It could be frame rates. If you have all these different frame rates, you're not going to be able to export the same as source because the source files are a different frame rate than what you're attempting to export to. Keep that in mind. So in this case, we just need to do something a little bit different. All I'm going to do is right click and say export. We're going to come back into our export settings. I'll just stick with to junk shortly. I'm just going to say options. But in this case, instead of using, using same as source, I'm going to select custom. And as soon as I do, all this stuff suddenly becomes active and people get confused and they get all worked up and they don't know what to do. Calm down. Everybody stay calm. 
First thing we know is that we're exporting to 720 by 486. So I can set that in the width and height. Let's just deal with the stuff that we know first, and we'll worry about the other stuff afterwards. Now, in this case, I'll stick with RGB. If you want 601, you can have 601. I know that standard definition NTSC is lower field first. So I'm simply going to make sure that lower field first is selected, and we're going to leave it as the native dimensions, 720 by 486. Now, you remember it said that the uh, when we're trying to do a same source export, we couldn't because it was a different format. So what we need to do is set the format here. I'm simply going to click on Format. You'll see right now the compression is set to H264. What I want to do is come into Settings, and I'm simply going to choose the Standard Definition Avid Codec, the compressed one right here. Now, what I'm going to do is just switch this back to millions of colors because we don't have an alpha channel because the, uh, we, we just don't, so that's why we don't need the little millions of colors plus. I'm going to set the quality to B, best. I'm going to come into Options. We know that we're working in RGB, NTSC, and in this case, I'll go with 2 to 1 interlace. That quality, that resolution is good enough, and you know we actually send stuff out to air at 2 to 1 uh, for standard definition. So 2 to 1 is perfect. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say OK. Now you're going to notice most people skip down and keep going and then when they export things don't look right because the dimensions aren't right. 640 by 360 is not correct. We know that this is going to be 720 by 46. But what I'm also going to do is just tell the Avid, you know what, just use the current settings. Now it's going to use 720 by 486. I'll say OK. The sound, we're going to set to 48. So this to be 128, just like such. I'll simply say OK. And you can leave Prepare for Internet Streaming on if you want to. I'll simply say OK. And what I'm going to do is call this QTSD Avid 2 to 1. There we go. I'm going to say Save. And guess what? Now I'm going to call this 2SD and say Save. And you're going to see what happens now is that your export has now suddenly come to a grinding halt as far as the speed. I'm just going to stop that for one second here. I'm just going to pick an area in here to export just for the purposes of being quick here. Call this 2SD. Say go. Because now we're essentially encoding, or in this case actually probably a better way to put it is transcoding to a different codec. And you'll see now that if I minimize Symphony, I come to that 2SD. What we now have is a standard definition version of our HD counterpart. And you'll see if I come up to Window and I say Show Movie Inspector, we're dealing with the Avid Meridian Compressed Codec at 720 by 486. Okay, a lot of things we covered in this tutorial. First thing that we covered, if you have clips that are super long that you want to check to make sure they're okay before you actually go through the whole process of importing, aim a link to them and take a look at them. But also remember, when you aim a link to, make sure that that quality button is set to full so you're not looking at the draft quality of anything. And on your exports, remember, if you've imported stuff or captured stuff, you worked with it in your timeline, you want to export it, always go same as source. Why? First of all, you obviously want to stick with, you know, you stick with the same resolution the entire way through from the, you know, from the editing to the exporting. What you also want to do is once you're doing same as source exports, they're a lot faster, as you saw, than doing an actual conversion export, which is what I did when I exported to standard def. But you see, getting that set up, just thinking your way through, as long as you think each step of the way, what is it that I want, you know what? You're not going to get lost, and you're going to be able to get those exports out and get them looking the best they can possibly be every time. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, if you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.